I'm not broken. And I'm not alone. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Nick. Joining me today is the peasant of comics, Jared from Comics League. How you doing, buddy? Uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm the Lord of Comics. <laughs> what are you talking about? Any man who must say, I am the Lord of Comics, is no Lord of Comics at all. It's anyone that says they are a phoenix is not a phoenix at all. Never claim to be a phoenix. I'm the phoenix press. No, but you have... <laughs> it, uh, watch your last name and your little label there, sir. My mother gave me that last name. No, she didn't, but you get one. <laughs> so any, anyway, yeah, so anyway, anyway old man, shall we continue? Yes. Um, we are covering the fifth episode of Teen Titans Season 1. Some of the parts, a, a, an episode where at first blush, it doesn't really seem like there's a lot going on, but like the more you think about it, you realize this episode probably means a lot to a very cer cer certain group of people. It was kind of funny. It's fortuitous that we covered this around the uh, like after we did after we covered like the first couple issues of Teen Titans because this very clearly homages Day in the Life. I I would agree. And then also, um, so Jer, have you have you seen like the Teen Titans mean about like fake meat or whatever with Raven? This is where it's from. This is a meme namer. And actually, that's a piece of trivia here. A, a raven de declines a tofu dog from beast boy saying that she doesn't eat meat in reality tara strong is a vegan so that that's i i like how how like the, uh the, the, they kind of mirror that yeah but like you know it's what she says like i respect the fact that um you know i i, I eat meat please respect the fact that i don't eat fake meat it's it's one of those things where it's like you think it would be obvious but to a certain group of people, you really have to say that to them, and, and it's like kind of frustrating to a degree. Yeah, I'm sure. But yeah, uh, so so basically, we got two villains in this episode. We got a double header here. Uh, we have um, what was the magician name again? I uh, kind of forget. What uh, Mumbo? Mumbo Jumbo. Yeah, okay. it's Mumbo. <laughs> I, I should have remembered. I should remember that because it's the same name as a Banjo Kazooie villain. Uh, well, not oh, okay. a villain, but it's a protagonist. Uh, he's not he's the real kind of... like. He's not the real antagonist of the episode, though. No, uh, the real uh, real guy is the uh, is the fixer. Otherwise known as Bruce Tim. Guy... I'm only kidding. I'm going to replace all the good ships with bad ships. Yes, exactly. Now I will and, say and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take one member of the Trinity and do her dirty. I I do I will say watching this episode as someone that has watched DSJL like 16 times now, I will say there's definitely a lot of parallels in that movie to this because this is all about like cyborg and kind of saying basically saying it, it doesn't matter if you're like part cyborg or like there's something up with you it's your heart that matters by the way i just realized the title of this episode mm -hmm. cyborg isn't broken and he's not alone ah there you go so so like literally uh, okay so i'm gonna put like that scene with ray fisher i'm gonna put cyborg's head on it mm -hmm. You should probably also start this episode with that clip, but we'll t t talk about that off off screen. But the the, the thing is, like, I, I got real parallels to that, and I, I wonder if that's partly what inspired Chris Terrio when he was r r writing that movie. Yes, he saw this episode particularly. He's like, I like it. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's it's really interesting because going watching this episode, I thought, you know, people, I I bet people with prosthetics really empathize with this episode. Yeah, and like they showed the kid cyborg. with the prosthetics mm -hmm. and whatnot. Like Again, I wouldn't be surprised. In the life. Mm hmm. Oh, we're making a fan out of you. Mm hmm. 
Well, I was always a fan of the Teen Titans, particularly Cyborg, because again, remember my first like comic series I got into was the new Fifty Two Justice League run, and Cyborg was on that team, and mm-hmm. they really played up the, uh, a lot of these themes in there. Oh yeah, most most definitely for sure. Um, but yeah, and. Just like I love, like it's like, oh, I have a power battery that I've replaced every few years, and it's really, I, I, I don't know. Um, so you're like, saying a, c- a cyborg? Is you're saying cyborg is b- batteries not included? Oh, and we have a we have a cameo by uh, yeah. Phoenix Press assistant. He's geeking over. All right, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, um. I, and I love like kind of like the ending portion where he tried to download his memories. He got all the like mm-hmm. human stuff, and he and he just like he remembered what it was like to be human. Yes, and this is the, the kind yeah. of the thing. It's like, <laughs> yeah, physically you're perfect as a robot. Perfect again, perfect. But really, what makes you a person, a perfect life form, is really your heart and your soul, and that's kind of what this so... episode is talking about. Are you saying that Cyborg is more than the sum of his parts? Yes, exactly. You could say he's more man than machine. I I had to. I understood that reference. So, Jared, tell me, whatever trivia do we got here? The meeting between Cyborg and the boy is a replication of the scene from the Teen Titans, Volume 1, Number 8. Ha! The issue also marks (laughs) the appearance of Sarah Sims, Cyborg's main love interest. There you go. The villain Simon was originally going to appear in this episode. However, they were uh, he was replaced by uh, by Fix It. Ironically, the two resemble each other. Hmm. That's Robin's crazy. mask is seen off his face when Cyborg pulls him. Ooh. So he's been unmasked. When Beast Boy is counting, mm-hmm. he counts in Gotham cities. Which that that. That's kind of interesting. I like I like that one. Raven um, ha- was never seen without her hood off for the whole episode, but she was until the end when she sits w- with the three Titans on the picnic blanket. Yeah, yeah, that was a good kind of thing. So, Jared. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Oh, go ahead. No, and and then they have the the, the a terror strong vegan fact which I already mentioned. Yeah, that was pretty cool. So overall, what would you get, what rating would you give this episode? Ten out of ten, because again, I like Cyborg as a character, and I like episodes that feature him because he's one of those DC characters that don't get a lot of attention, even though they should. Thank you, Zack Snyder. And really, I identified with the message of this episode because, let's just say, I've I've had a similar experience. Uh, can, are you comfortable elaborating or N- not on stream? Oh, it, it's all good. So I, I would personally give this like an eight, eight point five. It's it's good. Uh, the mumbo jumbo stuff honestly just feels more like padding, more like filling to the actual episode. It was. It was a waste. I, I would have liked to cut that out and then focus on the Titans trying to find Cyborg because that was a cool plot. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah that definitely was the, the more interesting thing in my uh, my opinion. So so yeah, eight point five out of ten. And uh, Jared, how are you enjoying this so far? I'm liking this series a whole lot more than Avatar. Let me put it that way, because again, I have more of an attachment to these characters than than, than I did with Avatar because of my DC fandom. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree. So, what do you you guys think? Um, do you think some of my parts is a great episode? Uh, do you think it's, uh, do you think like the connections to Zack Snyder's Justice League are strong? Are we complete idiots? Is Wonder Bat canon? Please let us know in the comments below and please make sure to give us and a like. And is Nick uh, old? I mean, that goes without saying. So, uh, next week we have the episode, uh, Nevermore. Um, I wonder if we'll be getting some, uh, Raven stuff with that you know, Edgar Allan Poe or whatever. And, uh, and yeah. So, Jared, overall, now that we've gotten through five episodes, what's your favorite episode so far? Oh, jeez. That's a good question. Probably...
Honestly, I gotta say this one because of all the cyborg stuff. Yeah, fa fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, so you? this has been Nick. Uh, so far, I would probably say div divide and conquer. Uh, mm -hmm. Just because I, I do like, you know, Jinx and the Hive, you know, the uh, the shenanigans I got through. So this has been Nick and Jared, and this has been the Phoenix Press. And remember, I can only show you the door. You don't have to walk through it.